Never let it be said that the drinker's a guy who doesn't see things through to completion, even when it's shit that I've got absolutely no interest in at this point. Like Masters of the Universe Revelation, a disastrous attempt by Kevin Smith and Netflix to revive the classic He-Man franchise with 2021 sensibilities in mind, featuring a story that gleefully kills off He-Man in the first episode in order to focus all its attention on filleting an idealised version of Tila, who now looks like the love child of Scott Steiner and Abby from Last of Us 2. It went down with the fans about as well as you might expect, to the point where Kevin Smith is still being prescribed daily doses of copium to help him deal with the chronic butt hurt that got inflicted on him. Have yourself a nice wee cry, Kev, we'll get you there. Anyway, it turns out that Revelation was only one slice of the turd sandwich that had been prepared for us, and the unwelcome second part finally dropped a few days ago. And since I'd reviewed part one, it would have been unprofessional of me not to slog through to the end, so just like like Tatiana during one of my special sessions. It's time to open wide and think happy thoughts, because this one's not gonna be pleasant. Part 2 picks up right where the previous episode left off, with Skeletor shoving a fucking sword through Adam's chest just as he's about to transform into He-Man, and taking the sword of power for himself so he can turn into... uh... Skeletor man. Super Tila, her diverse female friend and a heavily wounded Adam managed to escape with a bit of help from the sorceress who sacrifices her life to protect her child. Wow, imagine making a huge personal sacrifice for the good of others. Imagine how well that reflects on a person's strength of character. Keep that in mind because it'll be important later. Anyway, Super Tila is able to magically heal Adam's wounds because she's now inherited the sorceress's powers and when Skeletor man shows up again, Adam calls on the power Power of Grayskull to turn into fucking Hulk man. Then they all get blasted through a portal and he finds his dad and they both have a hug and a good cry. What is this, fucking Star Trek Discovery? The gist here is that Skeletor now has the power of the universe at his fingertips, but apparently he's still mad that Hulkman almost beat him in a fight, so now he spends his days obsessing over how to beat him. You're a fucking god, mate! You could snap your fingers and literally blink Adam out of existence! Anyway, Evil Lynn gets tired of all this toxic masculinity, so she fucks Skeletor to get him to drop his guard. Damn, we've really come a long way from an innocent 1980s kids show designed to sell action figures. I feel dumb from watching this, and trust me, it takes a lot to make me feel like that. Then she takes the Sword of Power and transforms herself into... this. <laughs> this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the logical end point of where modern culture is headed. Is this what toxic femininity looks like? Anyway, pretty soon roided up Lynn goes kind of mad with all the power and decides that the universe totally sucks and the best thing to do is wipe out all of creation. It's like she just spent a week in San Francisco and promptly lost all faith in humanity. Needless to say, it's up to the others to stop her. And by others, I mean Super Tila. Everyone else just kind of runs around getting into pointless little side battles, which are literally just there to give them all something to do before the main events. Then Super Tila runs into the spirit of her dead mum, who tells her it's time for her to become sorceress so she can defeat Roided Up Lynn and save the universe. The only downside is that she'll be trapped inside Castle Grayskull forever, just like the previous sorceress. She'll have to give up the life and friends she once had and devote herself to her new calling. Wow, what an interesting dilemma to give this character, forcing her to make a big personal sacrifice in order to gain the power and wisdom needed to protect the people she loves, forcing her to leave behind her days as a warrior so she can take on a far more important role as protector of the planet, maybe even forcing her to confront her own resentment towards her mother and realise just how much the woman had to give up for the greater goods. But then she's just like, nah, it'll be fine, and turns herself into a super powerful sorceress that can also fight and leave Castle Grayskull whenever she wants. <gasps> oh my god, you go girl! What. what. The. Fuck. What kind of juvenile asinine bullshit is this? Do you really think you get to pick and choose what fucking rules apply to you, you absolute spam sandwich? Do you really expect us to believe that nobody else has ever tried this before, and Super Tila is literally the only one since the dawn of time to think about it? Fuck off, Kevin Smith. Fuck off with this, you can have all the power and respect you ever wanted, with absolutely no responsibility, sacrifice or personal cost, because you deserve it. No, you don't fucking deserve it. 
Nobody does. You get respect by earning it. You achieve things through personal sacrifice. Remember how we talked earlier about how stuff like this is building strength of character? Watching someone make the hard choices for the good of others, even if it means losing out themselves? Remember how much more compelling and interesting that is, instead of watching some boring paragon of perfection constantly win at everything and rise to ever more ludicrous levels of power that they totally don't deserve? Well, that's Masters of the Universe for you. So so needless to say, roided up Lynn eventually sees the error of her ways, because of course she was never actually evil to begin with, because female antagonists in current year are always fundamentally good people that only get turned to a dark path by evil controlling men. And then everyone has a big party, and diverse female friend gets promoted to master at arms because fuck it, why not? And of course, she just has to have that same shitty I'm a social activist haircut as Tila. I tell you man, when I become the all-powerful ruler of this world, I swear I'm gonna outlaw that fucking haircut until the end of time itself. I love how Adam's left wondering what the point of He-Man even is now, since Super Tila can literally do everything he could do and more. I don't fucking know mate, because your show just shat on its own legacy to score some cheap brownie points on social media. I really hope it was worth it. Assessing Revelations Part 2 without just repeating my criticisms of Part 1 is a tricky prospect, because really, all this show does is recycle the same tedious tropes and mistakes, only on a bigger scale. Once again, the story focuses almost entirely on the female character characters, Skeletor gets to hold the power of Grayskull for about 10 minutes before losing it in the dumbest way possible, Adam spends most of the story just kind of standing around waiting to be told what to do, and even when he does finally turn into He-Man, there's fuck all for him to do because the only conflict that actually matters is the one between Tila and Evil Lynn over who can be the most obnoxiously overpowered fantasy figure. Seriously, if this is your idea of what female empowerment looks like, then I hope you enjoyed those fucking crayons you had for lunch. Diverse female friend, who's totally not a love interest for Tila, is a great example of what happens when you bring a character into your story without knowing what the fuck you're gonna do with them. She literally has nothing of significance to do throughout the entire series, doesn't have any big revelations or anything even resembling character development. She's just kind of there, fighting disposable bad guys and showering Tila with constant praise and compliments. We get it, she's the bestest ever, you can shut up now. The show also features some of the most ridiculously hypocritical, self-righteous bullshit I've seen since The Last Jedi. Remember when Tila abandoned her sworn duty and turned her back on everything and everyone she cared about because she was angry that Adam kept a secret from her? Yeah, well that all gets conveniently forgotten about when the king decides, nah, it'll be fine. Nope, you don't just get to turn your back on friends and loved ones because they kept a secret from you for totally justifiable reasons. The king and queen are estranged from each other now because the king was angry at her for keeping Adam's secret identity from him and she was angry at him for being angry at her. What. what the fuck? You're angry at your own husband because you lied and withheld information from him for years and he dared to call you out on your bullshit? You should have been begging this guy for forgiveness. You have got literally no reason to be mad at him. But the show tries to present their estrangement like he's the one who's now sad and apologetic. Get fucked. He's absolutely in the right on this one. Then the king eventually apologises, because of course he has to apologise because he's a man, despite telling Tila that it's totally okay for her to turn her back on her sworn duties for the exact same reason that he got mad at his wife. I guess stuff like this is only okay when Tila does it. And I guess that could pretty much be used as the tagline for this ridiculous cavalcade of bad ideas and shameless pandering. It's a show that desperately wants to be seen as mature and progressive, tackling big ideas and heavy themes, but it's also got green space tigers and guys with giant claw arms fighting undead zombies. It tries every dirty trick in the book to make you empathise with its abrasive, unlikable protagonist because it's too afraid to do the real work of actually putting her through hardship and adversity. It's a He-Man show without He-Man, a show that's so in love with its new protagonist that it tramples and abandons everything that people actually wanted to see. Kevin Smith might be rejoicing at the lack of criticism for the second part of this debacle, but I think he's confusing acceptance with apathy. People don't even have enough interest in Masters of the Universe to summon up any kind of emotion now. They've moved beyond anger and entered into the final phase of, fuck it, I just don't care anymore. And frankly, that pretty much sums up my feelings on the matter as well. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!